Hello, I'm Steve Olson, the Manager of Training Services for Mesa. In this video, I'd like to share the workflow for exporting a Fusion design to an STL file and then bringing that into Cura for slicing and creating G code. So now I'm ready to take my design and export it to an STL file so I can take that into a slicer so I can 3D print this. I have two ways of being able to export this. I can go up to my file menu, I can come here to export, and then I can basically say that I want to save it to an STL file. And then you can see here it says it's going to require a, cl uh, a cloud translation to do that. And then I can sa save uh, or set where I want to save this to. What I kind of have a tendency to do is I have a tendency to use the 3D print command. So one thing that I always do before I send this to the STL file through the 3D print command is I change my units to millimeters because it's going to assume that this file is in millimeters anyway. And if I leave it in inches, it's going to be scaled down, obviously, and then I have to remember to scale it back up when I get into the slicer. I just find it easier that right before I save it to an STL, switch to units. If I need to switch it back, I can, but leaving it in millimeters once the design's done really isn't a huge deal. So what I can do here is I can go to my tools tab and this make command here, this make panel has a 3D print command in it. In the 3D print dialog box, I have to then pick the body or the component that I want to 3D print. And you can see I have the ability to preview the mesh and set the refinement. Personally, I've been leaving those alone. I haven't had much of a, a need to change those. You can see down here at the bottom, I can set the output to send to a 3D print utility. They have a couple here that are preset, or I can set it to a custom one. I'm using Cura, which uh, you can see I've set that as my custom output. I tried that one time and I didn't really get a chance to save the file where I wanted it to, to be saved or save, uh, give it the name I wanted to. So I kind of have a tendency to just skip this step here and just uncheck that. And when I say OK, it's then going to say, OK, what do you want to call this and where do you want to save it? So I kind of like having the ability to do that. So I'm going to do that one here. And I already have a couple other versions of this. It always calls it body one because that's the body in this one. I'll give it a different name. I'll just call it Rev3 since I got Rev2 there already. And we'll save it. So now I'm over here in Cura. You can see that it remembers my Creality CR10 S5. It's the only 3D printer I have, so that pretty much remains consistent. I typically print in PLA with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so that's set up here. I just need to now add a model to my print project here. So I'm going to print the wall hook that I just exported out. You can see it's set up here, and I'll need to then rotate this. So I can select it, and then I have some options here. This one here will be to rotate it. I want to lay it kind of on its back because I, that's where it's going to then print it out fairly easily without having to build as many supports that I would have to then remove, which is wasted material and wasted printing time. Like I said uh, before, this thing is a little bit small uh, compared to what I would really need to. I, I had a little bit trouble visualizing how big that would really be, and I modeled this up a little bit too small. But I can handle that here in Cura. What I can do is I can go to the scale settings, and then maybe I decided uh, I once printed this out double scale, which felt like it might have been maybe a little bit too big. Actually, that, come to think of it, it's probably fine. So I'm going to double scale it here, and just 200%. Uh, percent. And it'll, I, with the uniform scaling turned on, it scaled it up all nicely. And then I can look at my print settings here. The Cura actually has a handful of preset default settings that are profiles that I can utilize. I downloaded a couple off the internet that I was able to use. For me, each one, each time I print something, I kind of go through these and kind of make some decisions. In this case here, I might want to use a little bit more infill. It's completely, again, these settings are completely going to be project-based, 
individual users are going to like one setting over another one. Just because this one ha is fairly small, I'm going to set up the infill density. Probably there's going to be very little infill anyway because my wall thickness is fairly small. And this is a fairly small part. Actually, my wall size is a little bit thicker and this is a smaller part so there may not be a whole lot of infill anyway. Uh, the patterns, everybody's got their own preferences. Grid's not too bad. I sometimes like the triangles. Again, all personal settings here. For me, what I'm finding out with PLA, I've been running my nozzle about 210. Probably a little bit high. I was having some bed adhesion issues early on. And so I was trying to ramp up or compensate by ramping up my my um, my nozzle and my bed plate temperatures. I actually was running 65 for a while on my bed plate. I actually tried a couple prints at 63, and that worked out well. I might try stepping that down one degree at a time until I, I find a good adhesion. Uh, with the speed, you can, again, decide how you want to do that. For me, I've actually had some, a little bit of trouble, uh, again, with bed adhesion. So to compensate for that, I've been setting my initial layer speed down. And then I've been running these at a little bit slower than recommended. I've been running more like 45. And then basically these other settings, enable retraction, Z-hop when retracted. Again, these are just things that I've read are, are good things to, to include or to have. Obviously, I'll have to have it generate my supports. And I usually use everywhere overhang angle 45 degrees. If you watched the video where I did the generative design study, I set my support angles to 45 degrees. And so I'm just going to repl replicate that here. In terms of build plate adhesion, I'm going to say I'm going to use raft. That might be the best one, uh, especially something smaller like this. Raft would be the right one, which is going to build like kind of a, its own little um, a couple, like two or three layers of material here for it to stick on to. And that's pretty much it. I can go ahead and hit slice here. And then it's going to give me an idea of how long it should take to print, how much of a spool I should use. One thing that I've kind of gathered is I probably should take a decent note of how much uh, it's taking. That way I can kind of keep a log of each spool and say, okay, well, I use 50 grams on this project. I used 100 grams on this one. That way I know how much I have left. I've had a couple jobs here recently where I'm like, oh, am I going to run out? And I kind of have to, instead of being able to just walk away and forget it, I kind of hang around trying to make sure if there's going to run out, I have something else. Or I can, if I know it's going to run out, I can easily swap into a different spool. Uh, my printer does have a kind of continuation feature. The couple times I've used it though, didn't seem to work out right. So I'm still learning how to use that one. But once I get it sliced, I can preview. It's still gonna build some supports in here. You can see the raft that I was talking about that's gonna build. Definitely want some supports here for that hook. And then I can basically save this to a G code file that I then load on my printer. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that a little bit here later, and then we'll go ahead and take a look at some pictures of this when it's all said and done. So here's the finished product side by side. As you can see, I probably need to sand off a little bit of the rough edges that were connected to the supports originally. But all in all, it was a pretty good print, and I hopefully will have it hung up here on the wall very soon. Well, that's all for now. Hopefully you found this information helpful and something you can apply in the near future. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to email me at my email address there on the screen. And as always, thanks for watching.